Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want us to go and read the word of the Lord. Um, what I'm going to speak about today is something that I believe each and every one here in the house of the Lord understands and knows it. But though I was, um, I believe I'm starting to realize the way God uses his servants, let me say so. I was seated at home and I started hearing God speaking to me about what I'm going to speak with you about today. But facility, when I was thinking about writing it down so that I can come and speak with you about it, I just said to my heart, my mind, this is not what I can go and speak with the children of God about. Let me pray and God will, will show me something that I have to say that is specifically. And when I went to sleep, I saw myself preaching the same message that God has given to me to you today. So I woke up and I, I went to a chair and table. I started writing down what I saw because God was confirming to me that I have to speak with you what I'm going to speak with you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we all here? So now we are going to speak about a very, very, very simple and understandable topic. But let us go to the book of John, chapter 10. Johanne, chapter 10, verse 11, I believe. Verse 11 and 12. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your wonderful word. Narrate it and reveal it unto us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe you have heard where I have read. I have entitled the message of today, The Lord My Shepherd. Or The Lord is My Shepherd. But I just wrote it in another way, The Lord My Shepherd. Now, what we have read, we are hearing Jesus himself speaking, saying, I am the good shepherd. And a good shepherd takes care of the sheep and lay down his life for the sheep. Why? Because if there is somebody who has been hired, he won't be able to take care of the sheep accordingly or according to the way he or she is supposed to. So today we are going to look in this word, the Lord, our shepherd, our shepherd. In other words, when we speak about being a shepherd, we speak about leading or guiding something. But here in the word of God, we've been given the word sheep, dinku. Modisha, or this shepherd is a shepherd who is protecting, guiding, walking, directing the sheep. So now, when there is a shepherd, the shepherd, it means there are also sheep or sheep. I don't know if I'm speaking the right English. So can you tell the person that is close to you, you are a sheep? And we have a shepherd. Now, when we are children of God, being in the house of the Lord, we are as sheep. We moved away from the world and we come to the, came to the house of the Lord so that we can find a shepherd that will lead us. 
And now the Bible is narrating and showing us today that the shepherd lays down his, her life for the sheep. And Jesus here was saying, I am the good shepherd. I believe we pastors, we are under Jesus Christ of Nazareth, isn't it? So now, Jesu, this Jesus, he has laid down his life for me and you so that we can become good sheep. How did Jesus uh, come to existence that he does or whatever that he has done for us? He laid down his life for us so that we can become good sheep. So that we can be sheep that are good to be directed or to be led. Now, when you are a shepherd leading, I usually hear people saying these things. I don't know them. They say, when you are a, a, a shepherd leading sheep, you walk before them and they follow you. Isn't it? You show them the way where they are supposed to go and they follow you going to where you are going. In other words, if you can lead the sheep and you go with them to the ditch, they are all going to fall into the ditch. Now, because now Jesus here is saying, I am a good shepherd. It means Jesus is ready to direct us and to lead us so that we can reach where God wants us to reach. Can somebody say hallelujah? Now, because he himself has been ordained and placed before us as a shepherd. He narrates himself as a good shepherd. In other words, he takes care of us. Number two, he loves us. Number three, he feeds us. Number four, he protects us. He makes sure that no harm comes to us. Why? Kimudisha, Obulu, Kimudisha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Jesuuri Ha Talusa, he said when he was saying, I am not like a hireling. Because a hireling, ha wona wuna linto watao. Uba pofola yung we kozi eatla a wolf coming. The hireling will run away and leave the sheep. So just so are yena. Even if a wolf or a lion can come or any other animal can come, he protect the sheep. He fight for the sheep. He make sure that the sheep are safe. This we can say we know. Why? Because we saw him going to the cross for our sake. We were supposed to die, but he went to the cross to die in our place. So Jesus is always our shepherd. Can you tell the person that is close to you, Jesus is your shepherd. Come on, show my way. When we are born again, there is no other shepherd that we need to follow except Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'm not saying we must not listen to our pastors. Our pastors are under Jesus, isn't it? They are working under the anointing of Jesus Christ. Because he came to lay a foundation for salvation. Now, he is the one that is saying today unto us as church, I am your shepherd. Why? Because I laid down my life for you so that you can come and be what you are today. We are what we are today because Jesus has died for us. Hallelujah. We are what we are today because Jesus laid down his life for us. He made a sacrifice at the cross for our own life. Now in this time that we are living in, in these days that we are living in, we need to realize and recognize that we have a shepherd. Can you tell somebody that is close to you, you are a shepherd? So now, there are these things that I've written here. One of them is, when you have a shepherd, 
You don't discuss things with him. You do what the shepherd tells you. Hmm? You have never in an instant see or saw a sheep speaking with the shepherd. In other words, when we come to the house of the Lord, we find lost statues that has been placed so that we can follow them. Now, because we want to be the sheep in that particular house, we tend to listen to Jesus, who is the Lord of that house, the shepherd in that house, so that we can be able to lead the lives that he himself wants us to lead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you are a sheep, you don't sit down with the shepherd and give the shepherd advices. Can you tell somebody that is close to you, you don't give advice to the shepherd. You don't sit down and give advices to the one who is leading you. Jesus Christ is a good shepherd to the church. Now, when the Bible says we have to pray, what do we do? We do what? We pray. When the Bible says we have to go into the house of the Lord to worship, what we do is what? We go to the house of the Lord and worship. When the Bible says we must give and we must offer, what we have to do is to go into the house of the Lord and give and offer. Why? Because we don't negotiate with the shepherd. Now, the things that are happening these days is we sheep, we tend to start to negotiate with the shepherd. I will explain to you what I'm trying to say. God will say, I will bless you more abundantly according to my riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And God himself is the one who knows what kind of blessing is suitable, suitable for you or suitable for me. Hmm? Now, when God is seated with his shepherd, Jesus Christ, again, they communicate and they speak, what is it that we have to do for Eunice? And God the Father said, no, let us not bless Eunice right now. Let us allow Eunice first to grow until this age. And when Eunice reaches this age, we will start blessing her. I don't know if you're hearing me. Okay. Then in the meantime, what is it that we have to do for Eunice? What we are going to do for Eunice is, we are going to keep her healthy. We are going to give her joy. We are going to give her peace. We will make sure that each and every day of her life, she's enjoying her own life. That's God and the shepherd speaking, isn't it? Then now, after the conversation and everything they've spoken, Jesus will come and direct me, Eunice, so that I lead a life that will make me to be suitable for the kind of blessings that God wants me to bless. The blessings that God wants to bring to me. We don't wait for the time of God. When the shepherd is still preparing us so that we can get what we are supposed to get. Rinajo nongo rinyoko komunikeita. Rimu ledisha niliena. Rimu advice segu readie dilojwa. That is why you will hear us saying. Ha le kili kochari siki na lemi mwa yemi tan. Mara unanto idia lang mwona. Asi chari isi ya itwari ndi chufa to chagao. Ke ma itwara hao li mudimu. Mudimu babona di so utwaneli. You are not even worthy at this present moment to get to what you are crying for. The Bible says in the morning, I was reading the Bible, it says in the morning the shepherd will open the gate for the sheep. Again? 
And when he opens the gate, he lead them to right pastures. Now you are a sheep. Okay, you are being led to the right pasture. So that when you reach there, you sit down and you eat, you enjoy, and you, 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 you become like full with whatever you shall get there. Along the road, usali halfway, when you are halfway to the green pasture, when I have fitamo, what a hal like a shetum rauvana. Happen now, no more giangona. Eh, how naked change it. By a mafulonga mata la mola. Anger, we are following the shepherd. So when I have salimo, Kalimakalauru went out to which you negotiate, you start negotiating, but God. Research is a mile two kilometers, Maramori young Arfiti. Hantima Fulla or Namata Larto Atolakai, where are we going to get the green pastures? And now, when the Bible says follow, you said, Ah, uh -uh. I'm not going to follow again. I'm going to take my own road, and you take your own road. This is what we do we try to communicate, we try to negotiate. Now the Bible says he himself, he opened the gates and he take the sheep to green pastures. There is nobody who knows where my green pasture is. Eh? There is only one person who knows, the shepherd knows who today I'm taking Tendo Eunice and Joyce to green pastures. They are going to reach here. Mm? And now when they are there, when we reach there, you will say, this is your place. Sit down, eat, and be happy. And then we sit down, we feed ourselves, we eat, we rejoice, and we do all, and we do all. And when we are still faithful enough as sheep, he comes again when he's coming to check us. When he reaches there, he finds that we are in the right shape, we are doing the right thing. He say again, let me take you to another green pasture. And he takes me to another pasture. Our God, the God that we are saving, is not the God that wants us to stay in one place. So it means when you are here today, wanabomma. You have to make sure that you eat here and you become satisfied. In other words, you read the Bible, you pray, you listen to what God is saying, you become situated. When you are full with the word of God and now you are overflowing. When the shepherd comes, he takes you to another green pasture. Are you hearing me? Now, when God takes you to this new pastor, when you reach there, huh? you must know we are still going forward. God or oh Jesus has placed you in this place so that we can, you can enjoy what is here. You can be blessed by what is here. Be situated by the situation. Be fooled by his presence. Be fooled by his word. Then when he comes tomorrow, he takes you to another pasture. Hmm? It means now, you cannot stay in one pasture for long. How would you see more pasture? More to long it, you will I'm speaking mysteries. I hope you understand what I'm speaking. How would you ji plekeng eti bujelong bobuti na kwe telele? Hora ure auso feji juang boboling mo. Eh? Lintule? Auso diri ni? Abatu pe zama hansi ya neva kwala. Can you ask the person that is close to you? I'm not speaking about eating by mouth. I mean spiritually. I'm speaking about spiritual things here. Are you understanding me? So when God has placed you here, 
He expects you to eat whatever that is here. Everything. So that when the shepherd comes, Amen. Because even if I can bring back this person here, what is it that he's going to eat? There is nothing for him or her again. I have to take this person to a new place where the person can go and feed and eat again. Now we don't have this secret of Apuluswa. Yauri, wherever the situation, the place that you are in, the stage, Apuluswa beke fitile. Let me, I'm just giving an example. You cannot be like me, Apuluswa, five years ago. I'm telling the truth. You have been saved last week. Sit down. Read the Bible. Don't say, I wish I was born again two years ago. No, 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 no. This is your right time to be born. Now sit and eat what you are having. When the child is born, after that, after that, in a stage where we say, hmm? when we are born today, we just want to stay for six months in this posture that God has placed us. When now He comes, when He says, I'm here to bless you, you start negotiating with Him. But Lord, I want to be in that pasture that the apostle is in. I want to be here. Here, here. Here, Lord, here. You have jumped there. Maybe you have also jumped there. And you want to be here. And God knows that if you can come here and start eating of the food of this pasture, Udo be pelwa. Constipated. Hmm? If a little child that is supposed to be given milk is given food, Baba, the child will be constipated. Why? Because this child still needs milk, still needs soft porridge, and all these beautiful kind of things. The baby eats and eats, and when the baby is growing, is then now we parents will say, Now let us try to give this child. A little porridge, a little soponyana, we see if he or she is going to eat. So now Jesus is saying unto us, I am the one who is a good shepherd. Who knows which kind of pasture you are supposed to go? What kind of grass we have to eat? Why? Because we are the sheep. And the Bible said, he said himself, I am a good shepherd. I saw the hand. So now because I know I am a good shepherd in the right time, I am going to give to each sheep what he or she is supposed to be given. I'm going to open the gate, lead them so that they can go to their own pasture. So believe you me, child of God, where you are right now, you need to eat and finish what is close to you there. So that when he comes again, he will know how to take you and you go forward. Before you finish here, he will not take you forward. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close to you, are you eating and finishing up the place where you are? The grass of the place where you are, are you eating it and finishing it up? You want to move. That's why I say when you are in a place, do the best that you can so that you can be situated, be full with the word of God. And when you are full with the word of God, the presence of the Lord come to stay with you. And when you are full and the presence of the Lord is full in you, is then that God will lift the standard 
of your life. He takes you to another pasture. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you, are you ready to feed? Jesus takes care of his own sheep. There is no sheep that can say, I am not eating. Because where you are, God has placed you and has also given you the right things that you have to use when you are there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we read also the book of Micah, Micah chapter 5, verse 4? Micah. I believe it's so unusual. Mika, Mika, so they say. I'm calling it Inventor. <laughs> Five is four. Can I read? And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall abide for now. He shall be great to the ends of the earth. Can I repeat it? He and he shall feed he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall abide for now. He shall be great to the ends of the earth. I believe this verse is explaining what I was trying to do. He shall feed them. With strength. And I'm always young on where you are eating, busy. Strength will come to you. You will be strong. You abide in the word. You stay in him. You make sure that you eat and finish everything that is close to you. So that tomorrow he might take you to the next place. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close to you, are you ready to go to the next place? It's not me, it's the Bible. Did you hear it? You must abide. You must have strength. You must be fed right where you are. And when you are full, then you can move on to the next stage. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us read Isaiah chapter 40. I'm not going to take long. Isaiah chapter 40. Can I read? He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lamb with his arm and carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are with young. He will feed the flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are with limbs. Hallelujah. In other words, the Bible is telling us or is saying this shepherd takes care for the sheep. In whatever place that you are in, the shepherd takes care of you. Make sure that you are fed. Make sure that your young ones are also carried and taken care of. Come on, Shemangwe, when you are in the kingdom of God, he takes care of everything around you. Everything that is happening to you, the shepherd takes care of it. 
it is us children of god that takes ourselves out of the care of the shepherd and when we are out of the care of the shepherd there is nothing the shepherd can do for us anymore why because we are already out we are supposed to stay and abide where the shepherd has placed us hallelujah can you ask the person that is close to you are you staying where the shepherd has placed you are you in that place where the shepherd has left you because when the shepherd leaves you there the shepherd wants you to eat as again have you eaten the shepherd wants you to have strength ask do you have strength and the shepherd again wants you to abide stay in other words when you abide in the house of the lord let me try to explain this when you abide in the house of the lord you know every corner of everything that is happening in the house of the lord am i right you know whatever that the lord is doing with the lives of people we have testimonies of the beautiful things that god is doing in our lives we sit down and we speak about the wonderful works of what god is doing in us and we praise him where we are when the sheep has eaten and is full at venda upi una suzono pfu kana na mana dzichikana i'm starting to learn these things these days i don't know them why because they are full now when god is feeding us when god is taking care of us the most important thing that we have to recognize and realize children of god god want us to have strength be strong the bible says be strong in the lord and in the power of his might so now you cannot be strong if you are not eating Tell the person that is close to you, "Oka siti ye usaji." I can't believe you are strong. I can't believe you are strong. You cannot be strong if you are not eating the word. You must eat the word of God. The word of God must fill your tummy. It must fill your heart. It must fill your being. And when you are full that's where the shepherd will take you to the next level As the person that is close to you are you not bothered by the level you are in Are you not bothered by the level you are in Finish everything that you have been given Finish everything that you have been given. And somebody will ask me mama, what what is it that we have been given? Ka khwedi in a month you come to church one Sunday. When are you going to finish? Or ka khwedi u tabe di fela ka sonta. When are you going to finish? I'm speaking practical things here, isn't it? When are you going to finish? Okay. God has placed a time frame for all of us. And God knows with my attitude and the way I live, if he can bless me now, something wrong will happen with me. Okay? So now God allows me to stay in this stage so that i can consume everything because the more i stay in a place is the more i search for god in that place until i feel that i am strong enough i am brave enough i have strength i have abided in the place now i know everything about what i have to know in this place this is my time to go to the next level and the shepherd will come and take me to the next level hallelujah Hallelujah. Why? Because the shepherd takes care of the flock. You don't take care of the flock. 
Tell somebody that is close to you, you don't take care of the flock. The shepherd takes care of the flock. There are shepherds that God has placed for us that we can communicate with each and every day. But there's the greater shepherd that is above there. The one that always directs and leads us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us go to Psalm 23. I know all of us know this one. As the person that is close to you, are you following the shepherd? Are you eating everything that is around you? Because if you don't finish, you want to go to the next level. You go to the next level because you're finished, isn't it? Now, can we read? I'll read and I'll explain. I'll read and I'll explain. That is why I said I'm not going to take much time today. I just want us to realize and recognize that we have a shepherd. And we have to stay so that we can be what the shepherd wants us to be. Now, verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Bible is saying, Now, if you can look at the frame of the words, I was made to understand when the Bible says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It's because this shepherd will always and every day make sure that you have the right things that you need each and every day of your life. That is why the Lord himself spoke and said, I am a good shepherd. He will make sure that whatever you need and whatever you want, you have it. Hmm? Whatever you are searching for, you have it. There's no need for you to search. You have it at your disposal. The only thing that is left for you is to recognize that this thing is here. Hmm? Why the Bible says you shall not lack anything. You shall not search for anything. Everything is there. God cannot take you to a particular place or pasture and leave you on your own to try to find out things for yourself. When you are in a particular place, in a particular pasture, you don't lack anything where you are. Because the shepherd will make sure that you get everything that you are searching for right in that place. Are you hearing me, somebody? So where you are, if Jesus, if the Lord is your shepherd, you will never lack anything. If right now you are saying, Mara Mama, there is something that I'm lacking. No, no. It is right there. It's waiting for you to realize that it is there. The issue is, Tabayela na ribulela matomo, ija kaufela chedilingona until you discover the diamond that is there. Eat the word of God when you are there until you discover the anointing that is there. Feed on everything that is there until you realize and recognize the opportunities that are there. So these opportunities can never be revealed unto you. Why? Because you are not feeding. 
Can you tell the person that is close to you? You are not feeding. That's what I was telling you before. Even if we can pray for you 20, 100 times, because you are not feeding, it won't come. You must feed. You must eat spiritual food. You must eat the word of God. You must meditate upon the word of God day and night. You must think about it each and every day. And every day of your life, you praise the Lord, glorify his name, and always say that, God, you are the only thing that I want right now in this life that I'm living in. And when you start to recognize and realize that, you start to discover the things that God has placed for you right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now tell somebody that is close to you, are you feeding? I'm seeing a lot of Christians here. We are here, but we are not feeding. We are here, but we are not feeding. Can you ask the person that is close to you, did you read the Bible yesterday? Did you read the Bible yesterday? If I can say stand up and tell us what you have read, can you do that? Eh? Why? Because Papa, we take the word or the things of God for granted. Okay, fine. When I reach the house of the Lord, Apostle prophesied on me and say. God want to use you. I'm giving an example, isn't it? God want to use you. Wow. You are going to be a pastor. You're going to be a prophet. You're going to be a prophet. Okay, Didi. Okay, but you must be serious with the things of God. I believe I've heard Didi saying this many times. But you must be serious with the things of God. Okay, Didi. I will. You come the first month, you are so confident. You come to the house of the Lord, you are so punctual. You come and pray, you come and listen to the word of God. And when you are seated there, you started remembering. I was told I'm going to be a pastor, prophet, evangelist, teacher, whatever, apostle. And that thing started to burn inside of you. Konji, I was told I'm going to be a pastor. Hmm? And one day things start to burn inside of you. On Wednesday today, you just tell yourself, I'm not going to church today. I want to be meditating. I want to sit down and pray and read my Bible and pray. Just like how fella wabala baby li wa rapela waivala wa rapela waivala wa hanti wove. Bon no twin to booja asi wuria bobulela nam. When I would you Are you hearing what I'm trying to say? Behold, the food that you were supposed to be eating today. Ngiri the sheep shepherd ke na mudisha ke na chang di ngwa di sakai kai ma. What the word di sakai anger? So no hard di chia di sa. Onya kuri di fite di ije. So no when angu aje di wadi ijo wa strike wa nala asa gije. Kishala na mumudi shau tar mutomwe ya fokol iriki tuel pata shala ba ilibelel pata mai chini wacha asha sipil hanti the food that you were supposed to be eating is the food that we are talking about today. We're a child of God, there is a shepherd you only have to follow. You don't compromise, you don't negotiate, you don't say anything. You are led by the shepherd and the shepherd will take you where you are supposed to go. You are not hearing this that we are speaking about today. And you are at home. I'm not saying those that are at home are wrong. Are you understanding me? I'm just giving an example, isn't it? When I go high, you do the hantina. Ndwa ye ne ito di ya uri mata chiaga ubulele lebu telele the length of your days of being a a pastor. You were supposed to hear this message that Mama Apostle is preaching today, so that you can go to the next step. I don't know if you are hearing me. 
Hallelujah. That which we are saying today was the one that is going to lift you to the next step of tomorrow. And those days of you waiting to be a pastor are now becoming shorter and shorter. Why? Because you are being filled, you are abiding, you are having strength, you are filled by the Spirit, and now the Lord, when He comes, the shepherd comes, He takes you to another pasture. So because Hafita, he says, no, this one is a little bit of rice. He says, no, when he or she finishes eating rice, then I will come and take him to the next level. I believe you are hearing me now. Hallelujah. Now, most of the time, it is ourselves that are stopping ourselves. It is not God. God does not delay anybody. We delay our own selves. How do we delay our own self? By our stupid ideologies. By our stupid mentalities. By our foolishness. When you go to the house of the Lord, I speak it many times, I say, just be a fool. When they say, come this side, you just go. When they say, go this side, you just go. And when somebody asks you, why are you going there? You said, I'm following because she's my shepherd. God has placed her, so I have to follow. It means if he or she is taking me astray, he will have to answer to the shepherd himself, the higher shepherd. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell the person that is close to you, the Lord is our shepherd. We shall lack nothing. Verse 2, it says, He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He leads me beside the still waters. Makes me to lie down in green pastures. Mafulonga matala. I eat and I become full. And where I am, everything is still quiet. Come and jump away. In other words, I have peace. I have joy. I am enjoying my salvation. I am always in his presence. Everything is still. Can you tell the person that is close to you? We are close to still waters. We must recognize that he is the only shepherd. And we go where the shepherd says we must go. Hallelujah. In verse 3, it says, he restores my soul. This is what the shepherd does. You are writing it down, isn't it? He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. He restores my soul. This God restores me. In other words, he penel beats me. He even penel beats my soul, my spirit. When we came to be born again, all of us, we were having cockroaches and scorpions and matongororo and everything. So now when we come to the house of the Lord, Everything must be in order. Why does he do that? For the sake of his righteousness. If you 
Rwana was Sibyl. If no, no, Rata will say, but you just love, love uh, biting others, speaking bad about others. Those things, they just disappear. I believe each and every one of us, we have a testimony. If you are born again. Hmm? If you're really, really, really serious, you are born again, you have a testimony. Because when he saves you, he restores first your soul. He takes back your soul back to the original being. And after taking it back, he starts working on it. Panel beating it. Plastering it. If plaster is needed. Doing things that are needed in you, not in me. Now our problem is, what has been done in somebody, I want it to happen to me the same way. It won't. What is happening in you is because God or Jesus himself is penalbeating you, restoring you. And he is going to come to me also, restore me and penalbeat me and make me the woman that I'm supposed to be. You are a woman that you are supposed to be. I am a woman that I am supposed to be. And now when he restoreth my soul, I start to walk in his path. The Bible says so. Then he leads me in the path. Then I follow wherever he goes. I follow whatever he says. I do whatever he says. The only part that is missing in us Christians is doing whatever he says. The Bible says pray without season. For it is the will of God. And it again said, abide in me, I will abide in you. Hmm? So it means, I want to explain. If you pray too much, but you don't abide, you are wasting time. If you abide too much and you don't pray, you are wasting time. So in other words, you must be able to do all these things all together in the right time. Not according to the plan of somebody, but according to your plan and God. I have my time of praying. My husband has got his own time of praying. Most of the time, he will wake up during the night when I'm sleeping. And he will go and pray. My own is when I wake up in the morning, it's my time of praying. Then I'll pray and pray and himself will be sleeping. I will be praying. In other words, I'm trying to abide and also I am praying, doing, so that God can take me to the next level. And in the same time, he is praying, abiding in his own time, doing the will of God for him. And when he is doing that, God will take him to where he is supposed to take him. So now, what at Ashu? Nalilena, Renya Kodi Antoya Uswana Kana Kweti, Hantidi Ntocha Retsoncho Redidi Adiswan. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. When Jesus went to the cross, he was the man who was supposed to encounter the cross. Am I right? Now when he was supposed to go to the cross, he took his disciples and went to them to the mountain separately to pray. And when he reached there again, he chose some few, three of them, to go and do what? And pray. And he left them here. When he left them here, he went furthermore to go and pray. Maraha, we are to love to live. Marabechi. Do you know why? Their souls, their spirits was not, were not troubled like his own spirit. He knew what he was going to encounter. They didn't know what he was going to encounter. He knew that he was going to the cross. They didn't know that he was going to the cross. Hmm? That is why when they were left there, they slept. They didn't understand. Even though he explained to them vividly where the son of man is going to be betrayed, the son of man will be offered to people, the son of man will be beaten, the son of man, the son, all these kind of things he explained. But even though I explained, 
They don't even say, Lord, give us the power. Let us pray. This man said to us, he's going to die. The enemy is going to take him. Let us pray. Let us pray. Let us be strong. Let us pray. Let us pray. Petro, on top of everything, he was told where now Tangana when are Never. Never. We'll never do that. Where Nana? Kana when? Denying you, I'll never do it. Now, because he was not yet matured in the right place, it happened exactly the way it was spoken. I think if I was Peter by then, I was going to pray and say, Lord, pray for me so that I don't deny you. I think so. But he said, me, I will never deny you. And the Bible says, ah, they, when the cock start to crow, he remembered, oh, that's what the Lord says. And he went out crying. Why? Because na so holy, na so ji, na so holy. Hallelujah. The stage that Jesus was in, they were not in the stage. The anointing that Jesus always felt was not yet in them. They needed the Holy Spirit so that they can have that kind of anointing. Now, even though he was doing things with them, they were not in the same level with him. That is why when the time of prayer comes, they slept and he went on praying. And when he came back, he found them sleeping. Why? They didn't eat the same food. The Jodia Fabana. Our food is different. Hmm? Hallelujah. Are you understanding me? So it means, in other words, my Lord, you have your own food, I have my own. The cross that I carry, you cannot carry it. Mama Lina, you have your own food, I have my own. The cross that I carry, you cannot carry it. So now, even if we can come together, me and you and Mali Odi, and say we are praying. You might slumber. And this one might do something else. And me, because of the heaviness of the load that I have, I go on praying. I cannot blame you. You are not in the stage that I am. Hmm? You are not where I am. Not that I'm so anointed above everyone, no. Because God has placed me in a certain level. And you are in a certain level. Now when me and you come together, we will never behave the same. That is why when even God comes to use us, he will never use us the same. God uses pastor his own way. And me, my own way. Tendo is her own way. That one, everyone, your own way. Why? Because he feeds us every day with different food in different pastures for the sake of what we are supposed to be. So now why must we come and we say we want to behave in the same way? Can you tell the person that is close to you, I cannot behave like you. I cannot do things like you. I am in my own pasture. Are you hearing me, children of God? Can somebody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. I am in my own place. And what I am eating here is what God has assigned for me. God knows that by April this year, I'll be standing in front of you preaching. Hmm? And for all this time, he was preparing me to come and speak with you. So most of the time, you will hear people saying, I, Charis is only one man show. Uh, because God says one man must show us. Am I right? Eh? God says one man must come and do what? And show us. So remember, let us follow and see where God is taking us. When our time comes,
come, God will say, eh, Muruti, tell me your figure. Na kwe fiti le Muruti. Li wena ki auchia jono, go and show them. And you go and show. Eh, Prophet Korombi, chos fika chipinga. Bako tu yoba sumbeza, kama yoba sumbeza. Eh, papa, na kwe fiti le, zaman yoba boncha, la yoba boncha. Why, according to the way we abide and stay in the pasture and have strength in the Lord. Am I right? I mean physical food. If you ujile, ukona lina ape angkaja na munga kiti makalisi. Mkiri kijile. Maralina ife li feliche matachi li saaji. I'm speaking physical things like, but in the spiritual. If you lean a little bit, you might actually say, "Ji, lean on a little bit more, so lean." I am always reading the Bible, thinking, meditating on the Word of God, and you are always doing whatever you are doing. Now, do you think when we are placed in a row and it is said we have to run. Are we going to run the same way? Not at all. Why? Because I've eaten. I am full. When I start my running, I'm going to run. When me and daddy say, we must stop this thing of all night prayer, this is what we recognized. There will come time when we say, we are going to pray. Those who were here long before, they know we're do, always doing this all night prayer. Maybe once a month, all night prayer, once a month. Mara uto fitana ako, ye kao fela jwa no, wa akori tapelo ya nwelela, ya, ya suwele. Ya, ya, ya tewele, ya, ya. Kao fela, kire la pele jwa no, kao rama, utulu udi ya mitulue kao fela. And we turn all of us, we bow, rakuna melali tulu. Uta akwa. Kapita. Change a little girl. <laughs> so we sat down and said, but this thing that we are doing, it's like now we no longer go to all night. I'm not saying don't do all night prayer, pastors. We are going to all night prayer so that reality is shake our baba and wabana di TV kwai. We are going to stay together for the whole night. Now, when the time of us to be strong in prayer, that's the time we are snoring. In Jesus' name, amen! I get I was also sleeping. I slept one day. And like really, I wanna so fake you with you. One of it, Tanama, where I where are you? Pray, 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 pray. I never worry at the one, I'm a Tom Dimudimuru Fila anointing. And then when apostles say, In Jesus' name. Amen. And I'm Hallelujah. The issue is, children of my father, we have to be led by the shepherd so that we can reach where we are going. Hallelujah. Let us finish off. Let us finish off. And then in verse 4, we come to 4. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The Bible says, though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear 
When there is a shepherd before you, there is no fear. When there is a shepherd before you, you are comforted. You don't fear that time is running out. You don't say it's like my things are to the share. Because the shepherd will make sure that we are comforted. Can you ask the person that is close to you, why are you fearing? You are in the pasture of God. Why fear? Everything happens for good, to, for good to those who have been called. Everything happens for good. When today you have not eaten, it's for your own good. When today things are going the right way, it's for your own good. When things are going down on you, it's for your own good. When peace has left you today, it's for your own good. Why? Because God wants to restore our spirits and our souls so that we can be what he himself, God, wants us to be and so that we can be able to reach our destinies in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, we cannot do all these things, children of God, if we are not following the shepherd. Tell the person that is close to you, we must follow. So we follow. I love to tell people here in the church, they know, let us be stupid. When you are stupid, you just follow. Hmm? You don't ask why today we are eating rice. You just eat. Why today rija mashonja? You just eat. Why today are we doing this? You just do. As long as you are doing it for the righteousness and the kingdom of God. In your heart, there is only one cry that says, I am here to make sure that I fulfill what God has placed me to fulfill on this earth. And I am sure I'm going to fulfill it. And I'm sure I'm going to do it for the glory of the name of the Lord. I will never move. I will never go away from his presence. Why? Because I am abiding where he wants me to abide. By the right time, God will take you to the next level. Can you ask the person that is, are you ready to go to the next level? Do you think you are full? Remember, always when you go to the next level, to new pasture, there are thorns, there are stones, there is everything because it's a bush. So when you reach there, you have to make sure that you get some things out first so that you can rest and eat. So when you reach there, everything is mixed masala. It's a new level. When you go to the new, new level, it does not mean that you are going to enjoy. Yes, you will enjoy. But after a while, when you have first worked, when you start to enjoy and you have eaten your food, you go to another one. And when you go to another one, challenges of the other one are there also. And they come to you, they challenge you. You have to do what? To eat and be full so that you can go to the next one again. In other words, the thing that is delaying us is not God or somebody or Apostle or Muruti. It's ourselves. We are not eating enough. Can you tell the person that is close to you? We are not eating enough. When we are led by the Lord, there is no fear. Even if we can go through hot water, running water, what, what, what water, nothing will happen to us. Why? Because we are in the Lord. When you go into trouble, you don't fear anything. Why? Because you know you are in the Lord. You have a shepherd. 
When you have problems, you don't fear. Why? You know where you are going to run to. You have the Lord. You have a shepherd. Bible iri mudisha utokomela dingu. Already poor follow this kata jadija. In other words, when we have a shepherd, he makes sure that he takes care of us so that we are not eaten up by situations of life. So why worry now when you meet a situation of life? My God, I'm not waking. Be rest assured you'll wake one day. My God, I don't have enough. Be rest assured one day you'll have enough. Hey, my things are not going the right way. Hey, hey, abide in the Lord, your things will go the right way. My things are no longer happening the way they used to happen a long time ago. Hey, hey, be rest assured, they will happen as long as you abide. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And verse number five says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. When everyone is saying it's not waking, you alone will be saying it's waking. When everybody is saying it's hard, you will be saying my own, everything is fine. Because he prepares it before your enemy. When the enemy is crying, you are rejoicing. Because when you are crying, the Lord will come and take you over the problem. There is no time for you to cry. Can you tell the person that is good? There is no time for you to cry. Now why are you crying? Because we have a shepherd. Always, if a person can say, Mama, can I speak to you? Hey, Mama, I can't see you. Mama, I don't know. I also don't know. They know I answer that way. I also don't know. So now, what is it that you want me to do? No, Mama, is because one, two, three, four, five. Ah, this is simple. There is God of heaven and earth. He can solve your problem. Why cry? Why share your tears? Because the Savior is there. The shepherd is always there to take care of us. We will never be taken away by waters. We will never be taken away by problems. He is always there to take care of us. He is always there to see to it that we reach our destinies. There is only one secret of reaching your destiny. Isha Uhure. Can you tell the person that is close to you? There is only one way to reach your destiny. You must eat and be full. When, we are full, when you are full, we see by the way you react to situations. When you are full, we see by the way you answer to questions, by the way you do things, by the way you react. That's the way we recognize that you are full or you are going there. You are about to be full. Because when you are full, when the enemy tries to trouble you, you know how to answer the enemy. You know how to answer him. There is this verse that Rina Bapulusa by Yang Muli with Dimongatza Layomagatza. Rirata. God will bless me with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. Always, God will bless me with all spirit. Mara, you are empty as Gokoko. Empty, 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 empty. 
I know who I live with. The Lord is with me. Mara mutumwe can come. I know what hatas munwa na retokwa. Or you are full gaying. The inside of you will start to come outside. And when it comes outside, we start to understand who you are. Now let us be full by eating the word of God. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is good, do you have the word of God? So why are you fearing? If can niti can niti kilimo when I'm here, and can niti can niti, things are not happening the way they are supposed to be happening. Unalufuri wa furi wa lurubi wa robiwa. Mara mudi muta babona. Eh? Mudi muta diang. Ah, God will make a way. God will see to it that I have my own way because I'm here with all my heart. If I'm here in the house of the Lord, like in Charis here, Apostle and his wife is the one who are playing, and you are very serious. I am promising you, God will lift you and leave us behind. Because the only secret is in searching for the shepherd, being led by the shepherd, follow the instructions of the shepherd, and there is no wolf that is going to eat you. When you are doing that, you stay in the presence of the Lord. Abide in the presence of the Lord. Do what the Lord wants you to do. Make sure that you abide, you are full. You have strength, you can stand, you can walk. Any water, any mountain that can come, you know you can climb it. Any river that can come, you know you can cross it. Anything that can try to happen, you know you can do it. You can make it. Why? Because there is the word of God in you. Manaba Papa, we need the word of God. If only you can just hold one verse. One. Not here, our God can will bless us with all spiritual blessing. Uh -uh. bless I will never sin again. Because God has saved me. I'm telling you, we are going to heaven. Now, now I'm not afraid of Muzalan or Kota reverse. I'm afraid of Muzalan or Pilalinchi. I'm not afraid of a Christian who called the whole Bible. The Kamutari, if I did a Bible, it's about Vesavich, Beach, Beach, call. Call young William Wota, Kwakita Leon. Say Bakorinta uh, twenty seven, verse nine, Takamutra Kuta, verse and I won't do. Eh? And we quote and you say, but what you are saying that is in this book, you are not even trying an inch of it, but it's full. We all know if you went to school and you have studied Koskolo. One plus one is two. Okay? Two plus two is four plus four. Eight plus eight. You know, each and every day, eight plus eight will always be 16. But when now we can decide or eight year how, or even 16, we see that year eight plus eight in what year nine plus Bujenga packets be made. Plus seven. One nine plus seven again. Ki sixteen. Mara eight plus eight ki sixteen. I don't know if you are hearing what I'm trying to say. In other words, everything can come to sixteen, whereas it's not eight by eight. Ili nine plus seven. Or ili five plus eleven. The thing that is needed is 8 plus 8 is 16. No, I'm speaking like, I don't know what I'm speaking today. 8 plus 8 is 16. 9 plus 7 is 16. 
Ura uruna li wani ya short. Mara 60 ni ona. Hakiri wani ya short. Kira uru mula u7. Uriwe 8. Wani ya lai jampechi kamo. Kamo hii kama hili 9. Kamo hili 7. Mara kau fela didi ya hini. 16. Ura uru kai kai. Tia short. 8 plus 8 must always be 16. Let us not make 10 plus 6. Let us not make 5 plus 11. What plus what? Let 8 plus 8 be 16. In other words, I'm trying to say, your spiritual life and your physical life must be equal always to result in something that is standing before the eyes of the Lord.